Welcome back to M Hood Fishing, everybody. Bait first today, real quick. All right. Nice one, nice bait. All right, let's get this in the bag and there's something we need, need to do real quick. I'm gonna get your rod out of the water, whoever you are. I hope, hope you watch my videos because you'll know now that I have pulled it out of the water. We got it. There you go. Let's see what's on the other end of here. Oh, here's the other end of the line in this tree. What happened? Did you get upset? And wow, it's going all the way up there. You lost a fish and you threw this. You said, I'm done. I hate fishing. I don't know, but I'm just going to get this back together and put it right here on the side so you can find it. Whoever you are, yeah, you're right. Ooh, little, little tiny dink bass. Oh, good size one, but not what I am looking for. But that is a good size one. We are not even going to see if it'll work, but we're going to keep that. Oh, my goodness. I think all the big fish I saw down here are all these. And there's quite a few big ones right in there. Oh. Wow. There is a ton of big cichlids over here where it goes from concrete to mud. All right, that's enough of that. There we go. Well, that's not too big, but it's a piece of bait. And I see something else that we need to do. Oh. It wasn't just one person that got upset and screamed, I hate fishing. It was two, but, or one and a half, because this is half a rod. Where's the other half? Probably stuck in the weeds over there. Oh, well, no matter. I'll just put this over here with the other one and you and your buddy can come pick your stuff up. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, not the bait that I wanted. Oh, good, it's off. I got a surprise for the guys who like the big ships that are here at this spot. Can you hear it? Look at that, look how close it is to us. So yeah, I'm back at this spot because why not? If you're one of the people who is sick of me fishing for flatheads this week, I don't understand why. But yeah, that's what I'm doing. Still got the same scenario today. Low tide right now in the afternoon. Don't want to fish where I have to walk out in mud where I could go up above my belt. This is going to be much better. Plus, you know, twice in a row, doing a video out here I picked up a nice flathead so I'm out here earlier I actually left left the house at two o'clock got my bait I got more than 12 pieces of fresh bait so I think I'm good to go here I got really fresh bait that works when you're gonna go after a flathead with cut bait the fresher the better and that's what we got today we got plenty of time to fish this until it gets dark but they're that's probably when the flathead are gonna hit, right as sunset hits. Yeah, you're right. Enjoy the boats, guys. I know you like it. Got a bunch today. This is a harbor. Same rigs as last night. Simple slip rig setups. That's what we're doing. This is an eight-aught octopus-style circle hook. The leader is 50-pound mono. I'm going back through this in case people are new viewers. And there we go. Three ounces of lead. That's a no roll. There we go. The main line is 40 pound test. I always tie up my leaders with 50 pound because I never know if I'm going to be coming out with braid, which can be anywhere from 65 to 80 pound braid, 80 pound test, or if I'm going to come out with my mono, which is 40 usually. On this other rig, it's the same pretty much. Three ounces of lead, 40 pound line, 50 pound mono is the leader. But this is a, a six hot octopus style circle hook. I'm gonna put a smaller piece of bait on that. 
straight out towards the S Bronco. That's the name of that ship right there. To start, I do not have the baits too far out there. I hope you noticed that. Purposely did not cast very far. I want them just in front of where the rocks end. The rocks go down a good ways. This is fairly deep water. If it wasn't deep, these ships wouldn't be here, but it's not super deep. It's not like 100 feet. It's probably 20 feet or better. Probably better than 20 feet. Probably about at least 40 feet, if not more, out where you see these ships anchored. So, reason why is because flathead relate to structure, and there are, there's a lot of structure here. It's the rocks. If, I, if I'm gaffing and I'm not noticing, <laughs> It's because I'm really, really tired. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. It was kind of loud. This is Halloween, by the way. So it's quieter out here than near the house. I was thinking because it's still daylight that we might be better off having the baits close to where the rocks, where it transitions from sand or mud to the rocks, you know, right where the rocks come up. Because what if the flathead are hiding in there right now? Maybe the smell of the bait will bring them out. Maybe they'll be coming out soon. And then they'll hit my baits first. We're already getting a bite right here. That's the big bait. So that's the thinking on it. As we go through, I'll probably put the smaller bait out further and have the big bait real close to where that transition point is. And I'm just guessing that we're in the area of the transition point. It kind of feels like it. What I did was throw out and I reel back till I feel it hit something like a, you know a drop off or where the rocks start. I've been seeing a lot of comments from you guys that like these ships that I'm fishing near and you're asking me to talk more about them. Uh, what I want to point out right now is you see the S Bronco here just behind it. You see the uh, river boat that's got a barge attached to it. And what I believe is going on is that's a fuel barge. I believe they're refueling the S Bronco. The bill is probably well over a hundred thousand dollars too believe it or not i tell you what i was like well let's see let's check the bait and all of a sudden i'm like oh i got a sack of potatoes again oh my goodness and what i was about to say it does not feel like a gaff top and then it did and now it doesn't this fish He's having an identity crisis. He can't make up his mind. That's totally what I was expecting at first, was to hit a bunch of gaff top. They're still in the river, but I believe that they're on their way out. He's right here in front of us. Oh my God. You guys see what it is? Oh. Yeah, you're right. I got plenty of that in the freezer. I don't need any more. All right, got to deal with it. This is a common stingray to catch in the Mississippi River. They don't, they're not a freshwater stingray. They can deal with brackish water. They're not here all the time, but this is the most common stingray to catch. I think it's called an Atlantic stingray or a Gulf stingray. I don't know. I could be wrong about that. You'll let me know. There he goes. I never take the barb off him if I'm just going to release him. I think that's mean. Oh, small bait just got hit. Now we got us, got us a massive slack line here that's picking up. Yep, we got us a hookup too. Ooh. another fish for this reel Barney Barney the guy who sent this reel to me is surprised that huh, I'm catching big fish with it this this fish I'm not sure what it is yet it's got its head down it's moving around a lot it's a cat I think I saw its body it's a big gaff top is what it is. Told you they're still here. Look at that, that is a decent one. 
Look at this ship that I've zoomed in on down there. That's a pretty good ways from us. They're getting refueled too. Probably 100K or more. That's probably what they're spending to get it refueled. Just like this one here, S Bronco. 100K or better. And to our right, this is downriver from me. They're getting refueled as well. I believe that's what's up. Another 100K. So think about it. Over 300K in diesel is being spent right in front of us as we fish. It's a lot of money. It takes a lot of money. Over 100K to fill up one of these big ships. It's probably even more than 100K because I think it actually, to fill up one of these river boats over here that is pushing the fuel barges, I think those river boats can hold about 100K worth of diesel just in the river boat itself. Just spending that money and going through that diesel really fast, not just to power the motor, but to power the generators. The river boat has a generator on it that is sizable, but the generators on these big ships are much bigger. They probably have more than one. I wonder if that's a small fish that's already hooked up. We got a bite on the big bait as well. This is a massive slack line right here. I don't feel any tension yet. There's a bit of tension right there. Still, still getting that bite. I drew it in a good ways. Oh, look at this. We might be hooked up with this one. It's hard to tell. It's not a lot of tension on the tip there. All right, maybe this is hooked up or these are, I wonder if there's a lot of crabs in here because the baits are looking like, oh. Decent sized fish for all those little tiny pecks. Oh man, how weird is that? Kind of fighting like a gaff top. A lot of little pirouettes, like little sharp head shakes. Yep, another gaff top, sizable one. I'm gonna put him to the side real quick because I think we might have something up with this. It was not a fish on the big bait, so it's going right back out. So far, I'd say that there's far more of these than I want to catch on this session. All right, this is what it's looking like at sunset. That's pretty much where we're at right now. They're still spending several hundred K, not done. The wallet's not dry. Still getting a lot of action, a lot of little bites. Where's that big flathead I came here for? So far, it's just a bunch of gaff tops. I've only got one rod out. I was gonna cast out, but we gotta let this cruise ship come in front of us. See how slow he's going? I think he's coming up to S Bronco. There he goes. All right, guys, how about a checkup? It is now seven o'clock and we currently have two ships getting refueled the s bronco which is right in front of us and there's a four wind tanker i think it's a tanker it, actually it might be a container ship i don't know but it's a four wind and it's over there to the right i'm gonna stay out here till we get something big i hope well this might be good news that fueling barge is moving it's gonna mess things up for the moment while it's moving because that loud noise, I mean, just all this loud noise might be hampering our fishing here. We're still getting bites, but we're catching garbage. But having those props going like they are right now on that river boat, that really messes things up. It changes the current, puts a lot of them, them big fish off. But if they're moving, once they're gone, things should relax. We still have the noise of S Bronco to contend with. The last couple nights that I was out here, I did not have 
a ship this close to me here at this spot. Looky there. It's taken off. It's really messing up the water here, but it is going. And it's gone. Looks like I'm getting a bite on the small bait. I just put it out there. The S Bronco has turned most of its lights off. There's water coming out of its ballast and it, it kind of sounds like they might be pulling their anchor, but I'm not 100% sure what they're doing. Oh, oh, yes. This was a serious hit, serious pole bender. Barely any time to turn the camera on. Here we go. Oh, give him some line. Running. Nice. Oh. Oh. Oh, other line is going too. Other line is off. It's going crazy. I got a double here, I think. Let's see if I can get this one fish in. Whoa. What do I have? That that is that is massive whatever that is oh this is the one time oh got a massive i think i got some massive blue cat but we got something on the other line as well I might, I got this one cat beached on the rocks here. All right, this is the other rod, the other fish. I'm keeping a close eye on the blue cat down there in the rocks. Oh, I just heard, sound like a, a bag of chips behind me. I think a possum, there was a possum behind me last night. While I play one fish, I'm gonna try and land one. Actually, I'm gonna come up here. If I see glowing eyes and they're about knee high, that's good. But if they're head high, then that's a stranger. But I don't feel stranger danger yet. Dang it, I about stepped on landing net, see? I didn't call it a cast net tonight. Whoa, two nice fish, and it's only 720. Oh, beaver tail in two. So awesome. I'm so tired on this session, too. I'm glad I stayed. What do we got this? What is, oh, we doubled up on like 20 pound class blue cats here. 20 pound class blue cats. I'm, I could be wrong. They could be in the teens, but they're, they're not tiny. Yes. Solo double. Gotta love it. Put one of them right there. I'm gonna go try to grab the other. Nice. Maybe a 20 pounder. All right. If for some reason you didn't believe that this was a double, here, the, here it is. It's a double. We are going to weigh the first one. That was the one that was on the big bait. Ooh. Trying to make sure that he's not hitting the rocks. 1702, a 17 pounder. Ooh, some crazy water coming in here right now. Oh, 
get up here. Whoa, settle down. All right, this is the one that hit the little bait, 22.82. Woo! Love doubles when I'm by myself. Woo -hoo. Yeah, you're right, guys. Check that out. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Woo! Still got a bite. Let me have my, let me have my fingers, buddy. Yeah, you're right. All right, guys. Time to, time to resuscitate and relax. Let's see if we can just go. Let's get this other one. Look at them pink lips, guys. Woo! You, what you been eating? Probably a bunch of. Oh no! Sorry. Oh, come here. There he goes. Both lines back out. I'm not going anywhere. There could be more blues down there. See anything missing here? Yeah, you're right. I didn't even see it go. While I was fighting that double, S Bronco, the ship that was right in front of us, way too close in my opinion, is gone. They left. When I was saying that it sounded like maybe they were pulling their anchor, that's exactly what they were doing. They were putting, pushing water out the ballast, bringing the anchors in, and getting the hell out of my way so I could do that double. That's why they did that. They were like, we better go somewhere else and anchor because M Hood is fishing here. And they might not let us back in Louisiana if we mess up his session. Look at this. Look at, look at, look at it. Yes. Oh, about up my cutoff. About there. This fish is running in on me. When I was having that double, I totally forgot how tired I was. I'm starting to remember now. I decided I would stay till about 8.20, and that's honestly just a couple minutes away. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. I'm hoping this isn't a gaff top. It's not very big. Oh, I thought I saw the small bait rod go off. Ooh, ooh, it's got a fight right here. That's not a gaff top. It just beaver tailed out there. It's a little too big to be a gaff top. Oh, it's beaver tailing again. I wanna try and get it in front of us. Oh, it's a nice size cat. I think this is a blue cat again. Oh man, he just went up into them rocks. I didn't wanna to have to leave the other rod too. I didn't wanna to have to go too far from it. I wanted to get him a little closer to where we are but we oh here we go look at them guys see them you might not be able to but you will soon if i could ever get them in the net there we go got them decent fish to close on yeah you're right come on Woo. i'm not gonna bother weighing this fish check them out he is about maybe 15 pounds could be a little less awesome Woo. There he goes. Not the easiest place to release a big fish. Woo! Had to watch several hundred K get spent on just a little portion of our broken supply chain before it got really, really good out here. Actually crazy. Yeah, you're right. No flatheads, but I'm not complaining. Blue cats are just always welcome. Yeah, you're right. Thanks for watching guys and subscribing and I'll see you next time.